So you want to start yourself a superhero RPG campaign or you want to just play it as a one shot because you had a TPK and your dungeon master is still recovering from that. But you have no idea if you want to go for the familiar feeling Marvel Universe like gameplay of Claim the Sky where everybody knows there are superheroes and superheroes mostly wear fancy suits and they're super villains and they're secret societies and all of that stuff. Or you want to go for the more nitty gritty boots on the ground DC Universe Matrix, Man in Black type horror, almost gameplay of the origin where superheroes aren't really superheroes and they don't really wear super suits. They're mostly like people with really weird powers who know how to wield really weird items or you want to play a kid in the 80s and you want to be a kid in the 80s that has a special mask that gives them superpowers all to the beat of the power of love. Hi there fellow role players and game masters, my name is Mr. Trask and this is still your go-to YouTube channel for anything Cypher System and today I want to talk about superheroes. Well, superheroes, meta-humans, prodigies, whatever you like to call them. In my Cypher System collection, which is pretty damn big, I actually have three books that cover kind of the same subject but in a completely different way. And I had a people, few people ask me, they wanted to start a superhero campaign but they had a very specific idea in mind for what they wanted to do but they have no idea which of these books to pick up. And buying all three of them to then discover you only need one of them could be a bit of an expensive investment. Now, this video is not to tell you which book is better than the other books. Because all three books are incredibly good. They just are different in the superhero department. So what I want to do in this video is do two things actually. First, I want to go over what these books have in comments content-wise. And then I want to talk about what sets them apart from the others. Quick disclaimer, I am a superhero fan, not a superhero nerd, so I might make some mistakes against the lore of actual superheroes that don't really exist, but exist in our world. You know what I mean. Now, what does the origin, Unmasked, and Claim the Sky have in common? Well, in general, they all talk about superheroes, although the origin calls them a metahumans and Unmasked, Unmasked calls them a prodigies. Now, they all have a campaign setting. The origin has a very dark and grim campaign setting with secret societies and people that are looking for you because they want to do experiments on you because you are a metahumans and there's aliens who want to abduct you and do experiments on you because you are a metahumans. Human. There are other meta humans who are using their meta human humanity for bad and they basically become meta superhuman villains or something like that. There's all kinds of grim, dark stuff going on in the origin. Unmasked also has a campaign setting, but it's the complete opposite. It's basically like a small town, like in Back to the Future, where teenagers live and they have masks. They create their own masks in order to get their superpowers. It is uh, awesome music, awesome cars with way too large engines, awesome clothes, awesome haircuts, awesome everything because the 80s generally were just awesome from today's standpoint. Although I already talked about Claim the Sky, Claim the Sky basically has a campaign setting that is superheroes, Marvel superheroes. That is a very big generalization, I know, but if you want to know more about that, check my main review of it. Another thing they have in common, you can probably guess, is they all have a bestiary. Well, every cipher system almost has its own bestiary, with its own NPCs, villains, monsters that make sense for the campaign setting that you are playing in, which is really great, because if you choose a campaign setting in the cipher system, you always have a bunch of monsters in that book that make sense for what you're doing. Now, another thing they all have in common is they all have have at least one adventure to get your players into the setting and to start playing. The origin even has four adventures. Now let's get a little bit more into the detailed differences of these books. This is the only one with new types. Uh, this one also has new descriptors and foci, but the origin actually has none of those. I will get to that in a bit. Now I'm saying this one has new types. It has a smasher and a thinker and another type, but it is basically the mask that is the type. In Unmasked, you play a teen with its own like abilities and scores and strengths and weaknesses, and they 
create their own mass besides because at a certain point in their life they wake up and they feel a special power and they can see other people light up and the people that light up are also people with those powers but they also see mundane items like a glass of water or a pen or whatever mundane items that you can see everywhere light up and that's different for any prodigy the people with these powers they call prodigies any prodigy has different items that light up so they gather these items they feel an urge to gather these items and create a mask and as soon as they put on that mask they become a super version of themselves but also the mask kind of has a mind of its own there's evil masks there's good masks but more importantly there's different types you can choose for different masks which makes unmasks for me personally the most original setting the most original book of these three i think this is really cool for an 80s setting and also because of the mask system you can play this game and start being a just an average teen that goes to school you can start on every day you wake up you drink a cup of coffee go go past starbucks or whatever drink a cup of coffee that's way too expensive go into school have a fight with a bully all of that stuff and then suddenly you start discovering that there's there's items lighting up and there's other people lighting up maybe a person that you couldn't stand before but suddenly you see them light up so you need to go talk to them see what's up that kind of stuff is really cool for playing an unmasked campaign now the origin doesn't really have new uh types it doesn't really have foci and it doesn't have descriptors so, so you'll need to start from uh the cipher system rulebook the main rulebook in order to start creating your character now what does the origin do very well that is use items the items in here is a really cool system they go really deep into this basically the idea of the origin uh the world or the campaign setting of the origin is that at some point in time a thing hit earth from space and earth itself just exploded and everybody died and there was all kinds of craziness going on and everybody just died but the next day everything was whole again and the only people remembering the thing that happened are the meta humans the humans now with special powers that that are either using them for good things or for bad things and all of that stuff the mundane people the normal people just go on with their average day lives and they don't even remember this coming coming to earth like oh we're all gonna die they don't even remember that thing that that happens so the meta humans are now in this situation where they have to figure out what to do with their powers and they don't really understand it so the original also goes really deep into like if a power backfires or starting with an inability in a power because you don't really master it you can maybe shoot lightning from your hands but you don't really know how to master it so you shoot lightning at somebody but accidentally you shoot it into like a power plot or something and you set fire to the entire school building or government building or something like that and mundane items again mundane items now hold special powers and normal people don't see those special powers of those mundane items but a toaster could be an item that that spawns a giant or something like that now Claim the Sky is a little bit different because it is one of the white books. The white books or the genre books by uh, Montecu Games basically take the uh, descriptor, sorry, the types of the uh, cipher system rulebook and they tell you and give you a toolbox on how to adjust that to a different um, team or a different genre that you want to play. Like they already tackle those genres in the cipher system rulebook like fantasy, there's horror and there are superheroes. The white books are just an expansion on that explanation and they just give more now there is new foci there are new uh, descriptors there is a ton of monsters and there is a ton of stuff you can use and tips and tricks and a toolbox where you can take foci and descriptors and powers and types from the cypher system rulebooks and make that superhero so if you which is perfectly fine because the types and all of that stuff in the main cypher system rulebook are already like very heroic type stuff so you don't don't really need new types if you want to play a fighter type let's say you play a warrior or a, let's say you play a sage which is in fantasy it is like kind of a wizard you can do all kinds of wizardy stuff but in a claim the sky you can be almost like magneto or something like that if you play a sage 
Another big selling point for the white books in general is that a big part of these books function as a GM's guide. Now, all of the other books also have a guide on how to play the setting, how to make it feel like that setting or what they want to portray. But the white books do it really, really, really well. In Claim the Sky, they don't they don't just go into like what are superheroes or whatever. They also go into like the different kinds of superheroes and the different kinds of superhero settings and feeling. Like, for example, you have superheroes who get their powers from the gods other get get them others like i don't know tor uh for others get them from items like iron man others get them because they're an alien like superman uh all of that stuff they talk about how you can implement those things or leave out some things to make the world feel like the world you are trying to build so the white books are much more gm guides than the other books